Hello and welcome to Eat Tea Garage. I'm Eugene Tordo and uh, I want to thank everybody that subscribed so far. If you haven't, do me a favor, go down there, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'm trying to get this channel uh, monetized, so hopefully I'll make some money and, and that will help pay for all these projects that I do. Uh, in the future, I will be trying to do uh, simple projects that are simple and easy to do. I think people like them more. Uh, and are more likely to watch and more likely to click on the video which would help the channel and uh anyway today's video is going to be something that is expensive and is a big upgrade and uh not for the average user but i'm going to go all to that in a minute and i'll be back in a second Okay, we're back and today's video is going to be about my big break upgrade and uh, I'm going to share things that I learned, mistakes that I made so far and the reason I'm doing it and the main reason I'm doing it is I just enjoy doing this sort of thing. Is it needed? Absolutely not, especially on a street car. My 90 Corvette, if you don't know anything about it, I'll try and leave a link somewhere up here uh, to a little bit more info about it. And I'm going to be upgrading the front brakes to the big brakes, Wildwood big brakes, Wildwood brake uh, kit, 140-8337. And for the street, I recommend you don't get this kit. There's another kit that is more geared for the street, and I'll go over the differences. Uh, you can use this one for a street too. It's just that uh, I'll, go, I'll go into the differences here in a minute. First thing I'm going to do is talk about the big brakes now on the 90 corvette you had they had a factory option of the heavy duty brakes stock base model brakes are 12 inch up front and rear and the uh heavy duty brakes basically the front brakes are 13 inch and uh they also come and it's not the diameter of the rotor that's important it's the thickness they're also a lot thicker the stock brakes are or the hit the base model brakes are point Eight or eight hundred thousandths of an inch, 0 0.800, and the heavy duty brakes are one inch, one hundred thousandths, and that's what makes them better because the more mass to the brake rotor, they're able to absorb more, absorb and dissipate more heat, which means they're less likely to fade on a road course. That being said, on the street, the uh, Base model brakes are more than adequate as long as you have good quality rotors and pads. Uh, the bigger ones, I could have upgraded to the bigger ones. I could have just got the 13 inch rotors and then hunted down brackets and calibers for those rotors. They're not the same brackets and calibers. They actually use the same pads, but not the same calibers. The calibers for the uh, heavy duty ones are wider because of the wider rotor. And that's really the only difference. And of course, the bracket makes it sit up a little higher too from the center line of the axle because of the diameter of the rotor. But uh, I could have went that, it would have been a lot cheaper. I decided to go this way. And I always wanted to try the Wildwood brakes, the uh, brake upgrade. Now they do say that their brakes are compatible, designed to work with the factory master cylinder and the factory ABS and all that stuff. So. We're going to find that out. I've seen reviews where one guy claims no and another guy claimed they worked great. So I guess I'm going to find that out. Now, uh, one thing I need to go over that I made a mistake didn't realize when I ordered this particular kit is the big difference is in the brake rotors, these are just slotted. But I didn't realize that the slotted ones only are more, even though they're for street use, they're geared more for racing. So they come with a different compound pad and they also don't come coated. These I coated myself. I used a uh, high temperature header paint that's claimed to di help dissipate heat. So I went ahead and used that and coated them myself. And it was extra work and expense and I don't know sure how well it's gonna hold up. I live here in the Northeast, if it wasn't for that, uh, and I do drive this sometimes in the winter and the rain, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have bothered to coat them at all. But uh, I can't stand the idea of expensive set of rotors getting rusty. So that's the reason I coat them. I, I almost guarantee Wildwood does not recommend this. 
It's something I'm doing at my own risk so, and an expense. So let's go into more detail. I'm going to go into detail about how to assemble these rotors. There's lots of videos out there. I am going to give a couple of tips and things I would have done different, but I'll go into other components. They come with these two piece rotors, a loom hat, and these really great rotors. Uh, they also come with a mountain bracket for the calibers and the shims you're going to need. Whoa, I just dropped one. And these really nice calibers. These are six pistons, six R super lights. I don't know if you can see in here, but there's an arrow that shows which direction these go on when mounted. These are six piston. Hopefully you guys can see all that. And uh, the, what's real nice is you remove this bolt or pin and the pads just slide in and out of the top really easy. Now, uh, the pads that they come with, they have their BP20 come with these slotted ones. Now they are for street and track use, but they're more geared or more a little more aggressive where the other kit that kit that I'm talking about let me put this back without scratching it the other kit the rotors are slotted and drilled and come black e-coated which are better for the street uh, and they also come with different brake compound they come with what they call their BP10 uh, compound which is more rotor friendly and more street friendly and it's also designed for street and track but more geared for the street so i went through the extra expense of getting the bp10 uh brake pads because uh i don't want to chew up these rotors and uh if i have the, uh, if i ever do any track time i have the option of installing the bp20 anyway if you're wondering what the brake pads look like these are the BP20 pads, that's what they look like, nice and thick, they look well constructed, all that good stuff, just like you expect, and uh, I'm going to be using the BP10, now there's different in color, I guess that's how you identify them, but other than that, there they are, and different compound of course. Now, uh, one thing I don't like about the brake calibers is you can't use speed bleeders with them. They come with these tiny little bleeders, and there's nothing wrong with the tiny little bleeders as far as I can say, see, except you can't use speed bleeders with them. Wildwood actually doesn't recommend speed bleeders. I don't know why, but uh, I always had good results with them. It makes it easier, especially when you're a one-man show like me. Worst case, I'll get someone to pump the brakes for me. But I am going to try a product out I never used before. It's made by Napa. And this is basically a just like a speed bleeder. And this is it. This is the part number. If you can see that, it's 776-9089 Napa. And basically this works just like a speed bleeder. It's a one-way valve. Hook it onto the uh, the bleeder, open it up, and pump away. And I'll, hopefully this will work good. I'm hoping this doesn't blow off the bleeder. I'll probably have to find a way to clamp it. But uh Let's get back onto the brake rotors because that's what this video is about. So let me put this all back. Okay, I'm back. We're going to get back into what this video is about. And this video is just going to be about the rotors and assembling them. And I'm going to show you some major differences. Okay, this is the base model one. And you can see how thick that is. That's uh, 800,000 thick. And, and this is the one I'm replacing it with. This is... Uh, one inch, 100,000. So I guess they're the same width as the factory heavy duty ones. Now these are heavier because they have more mass. Well, actually, they don't seem too much difference, but there's a couple of pound difference. These are a couple of pounds heavier. That being said, I would think the heavy duty ones, the factory heavy duty ones being the same width as these are probably just as heavy, if not heavier, because this has an aluminum hat which lightens it. So they might actually be heavier than the Wildwoods. I have no way of weighing them because I don't have the heavy duty brake rotors. If anyone has experience with them, please share. Now one thing, these are two piece rotors. My two pieces, I mean the center is aluminum and the uh, brake rotor is your uh, brake rotor material. Uh, 
these are not full floating full floating is what i have in my hand here this is from an old ducati motorcycle i used to have and they i don't know if you can hear that clicking back and forth but they're designed to actually float on the hat so this way they can move this way to allow for differences in the rotor as it uh it's being clamped down on it it'll uh, compensate for any differences in the caliber how it clamps it so this, this way the brake pads are always square i would prefer a full floating uh it's not necessary considering that pretty much every vehicle on the road does not have a full floating rotor and they all work great these days anyway most of them and uh it's really not necessary to have a full float i would like them that being said on the street these can be kind of annoying especially when you're stop and go traffic because they kind of like rattle around when you're coming to a stop but uh or driving at low speeds and uh, now I'm gonna go on and give some tips on how to assemble these and what I wish I did and what I did do and what you're gonna need so I'll be back in a second okay here we are now uh, one thing you're gonna need is an inch pound torque wrench and it's very important to use an inch pound torque wrench don't use a foot pound and convert it to inches etc but make sure it's an inch pound and it's going to be 155 inch pounds which isn't much that's comes that's the equivalent to about uh 12 foot pounds or so so like they say don't uh make sure you use a uh good quality inch pound torque wrench this is a craftsman i had this thing for years and another thing you're going to use and i had to, this is a whole other story about these sockets all the sockets i have i did not have a 5 16 12 point so you're going to need that another thing you're going to want is a marker any type of marker that's visible and i'm going to go over that here in a second and you're going to need loctite 271 uh, I don't have the bottle with me right now, but everybody knows what Loctite is. If you're not, look it up. Loctite 271 is the one you're going to want to use. And the reason you're going to want the marker is you're going to want to, every time you torque one of these screw, these bolts down, there's 12 per rotor, and it's easy to lose track. So you want to make sure you mark them. And as you can see, hopefully, where each one is marked, that means I torqued it. And uh, you may want to mark it again, make it like an X, and uh, the second time you torque them. You should torque them twice. Another thing I recommend is before you uh, assemble this hat, chase all the threads with a thread chaser. I wish I did that. Uh, and when you assemble these, get each bolt started about six threads, three to six threads. And make sure they're not cross-threading. And you're going to have to wiggle this around to get them started without cross-threading. So you want to leave this, the, all of them loose until you get them all started, at least three to six threads. In fact, go full six threads and play it safe. You don't want to cross-thread it. It's easy to cross-thread this hat. It's aluminum. So if you mess it up also, make sure you got it on a clean surface. Use a cloth or something when you play it, place it down on a table. And then go around and torque them. And a cross pattern. You could mark them, take the marker and mark one, two, three, four, you know, in a cross star pattern. And uh, that way you can make it easier to keep track. Now remember, only 155 inch pounds. 155 inch pounds. Here, I'll tor retorque this one to give you an example. I'm just going to use two fingers. That's it. That's all it took. Hopefully you've seen that. Here, I'll do it again. Yep, let me get a good grip on this. See, that's it. That's all it takes, 155 inch pounds. Now, it's really important that the, the th that's why I say chase the threads. This way, they're, the, the, uh, these will screw in nice and easy, and you'll get a proper torque reading. Do not use grease on them. Clean them good, break clean or whatever, but do not use grease on them. The only thing you want to use on them is the Loctite 271. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but uh, these screws do come already pre-drilled for safety wire. And I actually plan on safety wiring these. I Years ago, I gave my safety wire pliers away to a friend and because uh, I never used them. 
now I need them again of course he's passed on and God knows where they are so I ordered another set and I am gonna go safety wire them it's not required as long as you install these properly and use the proper Loctite and do it correctly that's uh, according to the instructions they say as an extra safety benefit you can safety wire them only reason uh, now the only other reason you might want to safety wire them if you're doing some type of road racing or event that where the rules require them to be safety wired. Uh, I'm going to play it safe, safety wire them anyway. It won't hurt. It's a little more time consuming, but okay, that's it's better than having these fall apart on you when you're driving down the road. So uh, I guess that's it for this video. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, I guess that's it for this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, I hope it makes your decision if you decide to do a big brake upgrade like I do. Like I said, it's a big expense, so uh, I, you know, it's not something you need. It's something I want to do for personal satisfaction, that sort of thing. So anyway, like I said, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, I hope you all have a great day and God bless.